Well, hey everyone, welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. My name is Louie. I hope you're having yourself a fantastic day. Today we're going to continue to talk about Fab 2.0, Flesh and Blood 2.0, the recent announcement and all the things that come with it. Today we're focusing in on the History part, History Packs Volume 1, which is everyone's favorite white bordered product. Now this product, I think personally in the Fab 2.0 announcement has been the most controversial of issues in the, um, the entire announcement obviously we have the updated uh bo booster box for first edition unlimited that one didn't seem that divisive or really that you know whatever but this product seems very very interesting there's a lot of emotion wrapped into it let me start my opinions off by first saying i think that this is an amazing product for non-established markets that was essential and very very much needed in order to get the product in the hands of the consumers in these markets that are now growing or haven't had product and didn't get the unlimited versions of the cart i think this is an incredible product for them particularly i also think that the black label product for them the the differences there are all perfect and a really really great product for those emerging markets now a lot of con the concern about this product has been con you know the conversation on the concern of this product have been revolving around the united states market and i do tend to very very firmly agree with that concern in the u.s market as the result is we just we simply don't need that much more unlimited in the u.s market what we need are reprints of a few specific cards and not the 428 that are in this set so uh, it's gonna be a little bit of a video to try to figure out now at the as of the recording of this video we do not know the exact pull rates of things i do have a spreadsheet that i'm going to talk about what i hope the pull rates are we'll get into that in a second but let's talk about what this product is first this um this product is a second or another edition after unlimited it's a reprint set of wtr welcome to wraith uh, arcane rising and crucible of war only cards these are going to be non-foil and white bordered you're going to see non-foil and white bordered there are no foils in this product uh, it's going to, again, include the cards from those three sets. And then there's a black label product that is, again, for those international crowds uh, in Europe and all the other pl places, the black label edition of French, German, Italian, and Spanish in History Pack 1. And this will be a localized version uh, that gives them the the black border cards, which is great. Um, now, let's get into this a little bit. Uh, this is, in my opinion, a lot of the conversation in the community has been wrapped around this making cards more affordable for the player base. And I am all for that. I, I am I am all for that. What I'm not all for is just redoing Unlimited because I don't feel like Unlimited fully worked with the way that the booster box worked. Um, you know, we saw, you, you heard me talk about it a lot on the channel that it didn't really lower the barrier of entry. Sorry, it did. That that unlimited had a problem in its way that it was presented as in the legendary being in one every four boxes was an issue to getting the legendaries cheap enough to get involved in the game uh you still had 175 dollar tunics where you had 60 dollar booster boxes that kind of um it just made the difficult for the game to be uh, be accessible for a new player and a lot of people are talking about this product like it's going to solve that issue and i hope it does i hope this does solve the issue in order for this to solve the issue though the pull rates are going to have to be drastically increased as opposed to unlimited and this is my hopes for this product again as of the recording of this video the the nothing has been announced so what i hope that this product ends up being you have 427 cards in the set and you have nine legendaries so in wtr arc and crew you had 11 legendaries Cheyenne, and then the five legendaries from wtr arc and uh, WTR and ARC. Uh, so I doubt that Skullcap actually gets reprinted here because they are going to anticipate that Skullcap's reprint in Everfest worked enough and then they also have Everfest Unlimited maybe coming out. We, we don't know if it's coming out now or not. Um, but I'm guessing that the one that they dropped is actually Skullcap. It's just the one that would make the most sense in my opinion. 
Um, and then there's 62 majestic. Now it's very important that you understand this uh, for the next part. Uh, and that is we already know that some of these super rares are going to be upshifted to majestic. You know, become the Arc Knight was a super rare. It was not a majestic in Arcane Rising. Uh, it was a super rare. So a lot of these um, super rares are going to, sorry, we don't know how many. Some of those super rares will be upshifted to majestic. So uh, it'll be really interesting to see that. And then we see a very similar pack distribution, uh, rare or rare, higher one per pack, rare one per pack, and then common eight per pack. So here's what I want to talk about. And, and there are 36 booster packs in this set. What I want to talk about is that this MSRP, it, it didn't get any cheaper in order to buy the booster packs than Unlimited was. Um, and so everyone's talking about this making the game cheaper to get involved in, but this, I don't actually think that that is the goal of this product. And I think a lot of my initial emotion about this product was this frustration that everyone kept saying it's cheaper and it's just simply not. Um, and so then the question to me was then what is this product actually for? And we'll skip straight over to that. I firmly believe that this product is for new stores in the United States. And it's for those stores who didn't get any WTR, didn't get any Arcane, simply to have things on the shelf. Now, I personally think that having WTR and ARC on the shelf is a better bet. You can use those for draft. You can use those for sealed. These packs are not made for draft. They're not made for sealed play. They are just basically draft packs that you open up to get the cards. And so as a result of that, I don't understand fully why we have the commons and the, and the rares in this, why this isn't a cheaper product that only has majestic and legendaries. And it's a, you're not buying, you know, whatever there's 36 packs, you're not buying 360 cards. You're just buying 35 cards in a pack or whatever it is. Uh, that's more efficient to getting the cards in the hands of players at a little bit of a cheaper price, also a cheaper price to the stores. But what I think this idea behind this is, is if you are a store that has never carried flesh and blood, this is an easy product for you to get and put on your shelf. And you don't have to maintain a bunch of inventory. You don't have three different sets that you don't fully understand. I think this is a product, in my opinion, for lazy store owners who don't actually want to fully hop into flesh and blood, but maybe they just want to dip their feet into the game. Maybe they just want to kind of tippy toe a little bit and have the product on the shelf and see how it does at their LGS. And if that is the intention of this product, then I think it's probably pretty good. It's probably pretty good for, you know, an LGS to order two boxes and put one on the shelf, or maybe you open one for, you know, for um, loose packs that you can, you know, sell. Maybe there's a product for somebody who can't get unlimited or didn't, didn't stock up on any unlimited. And so they need some prize support packs. But what this is not a product for, in my opinion, unless something changes with the pull rates and we'll talk about that this is not a product to make cards cheaper in my opinion this is not a product to to you know everyone was talking about there's no foils there's no whatever this is a cheaper way for people to buy cards this is not a cheaper way to, for people to buy cards it's just simply and statistically not and that's where a lot of my frustration from this product came from i still no matter combine all that together i still feel like for the united states market it is still a little bit too early for this product i would have liked to see this product a year from now when we're away you know distribution still has some wtr unlimited obviously you've got channel fireball doing what channel fireball does and trying to tank the market on everything and trying to make everything worthless so that stores can't sell anything um but you've got channel fireball doing their stuff and they've got wtr unlimited on fire sale they've got crucible unlimited on fire sale so when you insert this product into the market and the, the map pricing is $112, you know, MSRP is, is 140, but the map price is 112 for $112 from channel fireball. You can get two boxes of, you know, a WTR and a crew that is a much better better deal than one box of this. And so that's why I just think it's a little too early for this product in this market. But those are my opinions on it. Now let's get to some of the facts. And this is what I've done. I've kind of taken this idea as uh, of is it really cheaper to get the to get the cards here. So what I did is I took the the WTR and ARC pricing and we're going to use map pricing here. We're not even going to use the the $60 kind of current pricing that you can get WTR or uh, you know, really just WTR for, but we're gonna use map pricing. There's 24 packs, which makes this $3 and 20 cents per pack. 
Now on the history box, that's the exact same thing. It's actually a, a tiny bit cheaper, not much though, uh, sitting at $3.11 per pack as opposed to $3.20 per pack. So now this is what I, I'm, hopefully LSS has told us what the, you know, the pull rate is on this stuff, but they have not done that as of the, the recording of this video. So I'm going to do the math for us and I'm going to hopefully say, this is what I hope that the pull rates are to make it cheaper to get involved in the game. The old price per majestic um, is, is this. So basically in a WTR or arc box, you got two non-foil majestics per box and then one rainbow foil per case. That was for the Belgium print run. Uh, and that is 2.25 majestics per box. And then you got, um, secret rare super rares. You got four super rares and one foil super rare. So because this product is combining, um, you know, they're upshifting some of the super rares. We're going to use this and say, basically you're, you're going to get 7.25 majestics and super rares per box. That makes your price per card $10 and 59 cents. Uh, your price per majestic or super rare is $10 and 59 cents. In addition, you had a pull rate of around one in 80 packs. This is, you know, that's the assumed pull rate. That's not maybe a hundred percent perfect, but one in 80 packs is roughly one in every 3.3 .3 booster boxes. Um, and that makes your price per legendary $256 per legendary. You, you spend $256 per legendary that you will pull on WTR or arc booster boxes. That's that price crucible, very much the most, you know, very similar. You're going to get six non foils majestics and one and a quarter rainbow foil majestics per box, which is the same number of majestics or super rares, it's still 7.25, which is $10.59. We're not going to really talk about the legendary because the legendary here is Cheyenne in, uh, in a reprint, and so we got the reprint included in this. So now the question is, what is the price per majestic in this set, and what is the legendary per the price per legendary in this set? So let's figure out what it will need to be in order for this to be a cheaper way to get the cards, because I don't think that that's the goal of this, but that seems to be a lot of the conversation on this product. So, which I think is a lot of my frustration from this product. So in order for the price per majestic at $112, the map pricing of this box, in order for the price per majestic to be at this kind of price point at ten dollars and fifty nine cents, you will have to see eleven um, a pull rate of eleven majestics per box. Now, in order for it to be anywhere significantly cheaper at a dollar cheaper, about a dollar cheaper, you need to have twelve majestics per box. So I really hope that when they come out with this print run or when they come out with this product, that the pull rate is one in every three packs so that it is actually a cheaper way for players to get the cards that they want. In addition, they know they're not going to get a foil. They know they're, you know, they're going to get a white border card instead of the black border card. Uh, so in order for this to be a product that is actually cheaper, I really hope we see 12 Majestics per box. Now here's the kicker, and this is the price per legendary. So the WTR, our crew price per legendary, again, was $256. That's what we accomplished figuring out here. In order to get that same price per legendary at $256, in order for it to be cheaper, you need to have a price, a pull rate of one in every 72 packs. Um, and that would be, you know, every two boxes. Again, you have an increased number of packs in the product. So it would be every one in every two boxes would have a legendary. And that is essentially that the pull rates and the price per card at the majestic and the legendary level would be the same as WTR, ARC, and Crucible Unlimited. Um, so that is what we have accomplished here, that in order to make it the same price per card, you need to have a pull rate of one in every 72 packs for legendaries and a pull rate of one every three packs or 12 majestics per 36 pack box of this in order to have the same thing. So now let's get into a little bit of um, I, what I hope they do. And, and that is that I hope that this product, the pull rate is about one in every box. Um, I, I think that this pull rate being one in every box is, is really important in order to make this a better product than unlimited. I don't think that unlimited worked 
because unlimited pull rates of these cards that you really you don't need them to play but in order to really unlock your class you need them to play uh were too hard to pull and that caused the unlimited market to be this thing where you just kind of only bought singles and as a result of only buying singles not as many boxes were open because it was so hard to get those legendaries and so i really hope that they increase that pull rate to something like one in every 36 packs which would actually be twice as you know it would, it would be twice as easy to pull than the WTR essentially your your price per card would be much cheaper your price per legendary would be much cheaper and I think that's um that that's a win and then that will also set up the EV of this to actually matter and I know this is not about the EV I know that opening this box is not about the EV I know that the intention of these products is not about financial but this is still a trading card game and and because this is still a trading card game this EV has to be positive on release in order for the cards to be opened and added to the market and particularly the at the worst case scenario the EV has to be positive for a store to open up product to put cards onto the market otherwise what will happen to this product if the if the ev isn't there if the estimated value if the price per box that you're going to get by opening it isn't helpful for the market these boxes will just sit at distribution or worse they'll sit at a store and they won't sell and that's where we get into a problem so this is not about me making money this is not about the pull rates being you know that that we can all open a bunch of boxes and it's free attendees no this is actually about the idea that especially at the beginning of the release i don't care about in six months but at the beginning of the release when the release when this product comes out when you open it that the value of the cards actually requires it to be high enough that more and more people will buy and open the product, driving the product down or driving the value of singles into a point where it's easier for people to get, if that makes sense. So in order for that to happen, um, this is what, the, so ba this is based on that 12 and 0.5 pour rate. So 12 Majestics per box and one Legendary every two boxes. Currently, at the current market price, so what I've done is taken the price of cards from my t my tracker. This is as of uh, two days ago, so as of like April, probably 14th. Uh, this was the, the price point of the non-foil unlimited version of all the cards. And this includes all the super rares and majestics from WTR, ARC, and crew because that's what could be in this product. Again, we don't know exactly what cards are in this product, but we do know that there's 62 cards. Um, and so what I've done is I've taken all the cards and I've taken the average price, which is here, and then I've taken the top 64 cards. And so I've said the most expensive cards are the ones that they will reprint. I doubt that they actually print, reprint the actual top 62, but this is taking the top 62. So I brought two prices for you. Um, and so if you use that pull rate, 12 Majestics per box and one Legendary every two boxes, again, I hope that the pull rate's one Legendary every box, but to make this the same value as un Unlimited was, it would be every two boxes. Um, your your average price here is sitting at $133. So you're going to get $6 and the average price of a Majestic is $6.98. The average price of a Legendary, and that includes um, Skullcap, is $99. Uh, so that makes your EV of your box on average $133. Now, if you take the top 64 cards, your uh, Majestics are more expensive, obviously, because you're not averaging out all the Majestics. You're at $114 in Majestics and $164.74. That's great if all the cards stay at the same price as, um, you know, as the current price of Unlimited. But when you're adding all these cards in, you are going to drive the price down. So then what I've done is what, what does this work out to if you lose value in the market? So then I've taken that down 75%. So here's your previous one. And I've taken that down 75%. Um, so what that is, is you've got a uh, $100 here on the average price of them and $123. Remember, uh, map pricing would be 112 That's kind of our sweet spot. And then if, you, if they lose 50% of the value, so if the white bordered cards have 50% of the value of their current price of the unlimited cards, uh, you'll be at $66 for the average price and then it's $82 at the top 
um, the the top 64 average. So now what this means, the the this is just a this is a hundred percent speculative, right? Like we don't know the we don't know how this will actually affect even the unlimited cards. I mean this this could drive the unlimited cards down in value initially, um, and then if the white border cards are not or half the value of the unlimited cards, then you have a much even a much even worse EV here, or or it could not drive anything down. It, it could do a lot of things. I think that this data, though, what this tells me is that the pull rate needs to be about one legendary per box, um, where initially when you open this, there's going to be an influx of people who say, oh, I never got that legendary and I can finally afford this deck. And so they pick up that legendary. Uh, the, the, the data here suggests to me um, you know, if we use, I, I think we're being kind of lenient here using the 75% price point. We're already pretty close to that, um, that $112 sweet spot here. And so if you increase the legendary here to two, uh, or to one, the numbers really go up pretty significantly. And, and that gives us a little bit more wiggle room in, uh, how will this actually affect the market? So, uh, you know, you're, you're seeing a more of a price point here at 137 and $160. And that assumes a 75% dip or the 91 or it gives us a little bit more wiggle room. So I particularly, um, I, I really hope we see a pull rate of one in every box has a legendary. I think that will really help the market, both from a perspective of the, the, the cost of the legendaries coming down, but also the EV of this box going up. Um, I think it kind of fits that sweet spot. And then additionally with that, I do think that the, um, it will give the, the rainbow foil ones an even more premium too, which will be kind of nice for those who did invest in the unlimited. If you have all, you know, a considerable amount more of the, the white bordered cards, it kind of makes those unlimited ones feel a little bit more special. So those are just my opinions. Again, we don't know that data. So that's why I kind of had to do this whole figuring out the price per legendary and, and figuring out how that works. I hope that they increase that to make it actually more, you know, cheaper for people to get into. But at the end of the day, I think that this product, in my opinion, is created for the international market and then on, as a side project kind of for the United States market for a store who has never carried the game. I still personally think that keeping unlimited WTR and ARC around and, and managing the um, the way that that is handled is better because you can draft with it and those stores um, have another avenue of which that they can engage with the game. But I also see the understanding that this product can be used for prize support. I've heard a couple of people excited to open it up because it's fun to, you know, you could get a, a couple cards in the different sets. I, I do see the value of this product. I personally think my opinion on this is that this is about a year early for this product in the United States marketplace. Um, but that being said, I also fully understand that the main, I, and I really believe the main allure of this product is for those, the crowd that never got any WTR and ARC and on or and, and unlimited overseas. So uh, I think that's a huge win for those countries. I think that's a huge win for the growth of the game. I just, I'm a little bit worried from the United States perspective about this product. Uh, be, simply put, because of the amount of unlimited that is still sloshing through at the distribution and the market side of the game. So, hope you guys uh, got, got a little bit out of that. Let me know in the comment section what you think the pull rates will be on these things. Uh, it would be really interesting to see what LSS actually puts out in terms of the pull rates to see what the price per card is uh, looking at the, uh, the Majestics and the Legendary. So, hope you have yourself a fantastic day. Remember, be kind to the people around you, and we'll see you again next video. Yeah.